When we had last left Harrier Dubois, he and Lieutenant Kim Kitsuragi got a few things done around town, including buying some cool shoes and the terrible speakers hidden underneath, and also chatting with some old familiar faces back inside the Whirling and Rags. But not least of all did they encounter a couple of new faces, yes, standing out front of Kim Kitsuragi's Kanima machine motor carriage vehicle were in fact two juvenile delinquents with uh, some matching and amazing jackets who went by the names of Fuck the World and Piss and then they decide to take their fucking jackets. <laughs> this is Disco Elysium. Welcome back. Now, we also need to get some shit done here, hopefully. Right? We need to try and figure... I really do not... I am probably more inclined to um, leave the door open than I am to bust in and smash the window of the lady driver's lorry. Right? I really do not want to do that. I don't want to leave the door open like that, but I can I can let that go, <laughs> right? Because no one will know that it was me except for uh, Everard, right? But that said, that could also be blackmail, right? I really don't want to do it. Um, but like I said, most of all, I don't want to smash the, uh, the lorry up. So, we're going to try to pass this shit if we can. And also, it occurred to me, in thinking about this stuff ahead of time, maybe the pale driver has some info? I would rather, like, bother the pale driver. Remember that old smoking woman who was just totally fucking out of it? Maybe she has information on the lady driver? Maybe she is the lady driver? I don't think so, though. I really do not think she is the lady driver. But maybe she has information that we could somehow get out of her rather than breaking the fucking lorry, right? Okay, what check was this? It's probably visual calc, right? Let's do a double check here. All right, visual calculus, yeah, okay. Let's see here. So we also need to put a point into vis calc or vis calc. Do we prefer vis or vis? I like vis, even though it should technically be vis. All right, let's see. Let's get our shit going on. There we go, swap those glasses. Do we have any other plus visual calculus? Hmm. Encyclopedia, conceptualization, interfacing. Oh yeah, this. I think that's it, right? From our experiences last time? I think that's totally it. Yeah. Unless these new jackets... No, they, do, they don't offer us anything along those lines. Okay, fair enough. Okay, wow, what a look. And let's see. Would we be better off... We do need to put a point into it, right? We do need to put at least one point in here. So let's do it. What's What thought is reducing our shit by one? Is it uh, an important one? Or is it one that I would be fine losing? Hmm. Let's see. Oh, Mazovian socioeconomics. There's no way I'm getting rid of that one. Okay, that one is like a staple for us. Okay, so let us invest another point. And we can smoke too, right? We should probably smoke. That way we're smarter. Okay, let's level up. Vizcal. Maybe Vizcal is it. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's what we're looking for. Accept changes. There we are. Yep. And then... Let's pull out the smokes. We're getting low on smokes, but that said, we could potentially buy some, right? We should also drop off our tear at the, uh, at the freight, right? We probably have, like, one point something real worth. Okay. Also, does speed give us... What does speed give us? Motorix and Psyche. Okay. Alright, because I forgot that we got that upgrade to where speed gives us, like, bonus additional shit on top of what it already does. Okay. Let's see. Now let's smoke them, because we got them. Oh, yeah. Fuck me up. 
throw it on the ground. All right, let's give it a shot. Here we go. <laughs> oh, it's a medium one, but oh, we're up to 83%. Okay, perception sight. There are several footprints in the mud left by work boots. Anywhere from six to 12 pairs have walked here. Visual calculus, medium 11, get an exact count. Fuck! Oh, shit! 83% too! Oh, fuck me. Visual calculus medium failure. Wow. Still not doing it. You're bad at this. <laughs> this seems really important. Tracks on the scene. And I can't read them at all, Lieutenant. <laughs> Whisper to yourself, why is this so complicated? I keep failing. Swallow it, just go on. Maybe we can get the lieutenant's help. Lieutenant, this is really important. Don't beat yourself down. Neither can I. We'll have another look later. Shit. Lieutenant! I'm gonna put another fucking point into Viz Vizcal. I have points to spare. I can do this. Am I willing to do this? I'm willing to do it. One more point at least. That's as far as we go with this. All in the name of not fucking over that lady driver, right? Oh my gosh, and <laughs> for all we know, this this could be a huge mistake, and we end up having to do it anyway, right? <laughs> oh well, that's what this is all about, right? Making terrible mistakes. Okay, 92% chance, 9% bonus. Oh, thank God! Visual calculus, medium success. Eight pairs of boots have shuffled back and forth in the mud. Where else have we seen a gang of men in work boots? Oh look, it even says right there. Look at, oh shit, look, I, look, I put down like little markers and shit. Oh, that's cool as hell. All right. Where else have we seen a gang of men in work boots? That's right. The Hardy Boys in the mess hall of the Whirling and Rags. Go over them one by one. One. Standard work boot, steel, reinforced toes. No 46. Just like Titus was wearing in his booth. This is the big dick. Titus Hardy. The one with the ball cap on his head. Interesting. Is it? They didn't even bother to change boots. Putting them on the scene is easy. Maybe even too easy. Yeah, that's what makes it interesting, right? Continue. 2. Standard work boots, steel reinforced toes, number 44. I'm assuming that's number, right? Yeah. Either the blonde muscular guy, Glenn, or the young guy with the plectrum around his neck. 3. Hobnailed work boot, steel reinforced toes, number 43. The inked banger, perhaps? 4. Standard work boot number 45 or 46. Theo, the old smoker. You think you see a tiny fleck of cigarette ash inside the print. What else? 5. Another standard work boot. Reinforced toes. No 44. Same as before. Either the musician Eugene or the muscle-bound blonde Glenn. 6. Light as air. Same make of boot, but no 41. Or number 41. Small? Like a rat? Shanky. I should have gotten this earlier. Better late than never, detective. The whole world is dark and the tracks burn in it with strange beauty. Count the rest. 7. The glowing outline of a standard work boot, number 46. The imprints are twice as deep as the others. The weight exceeds 200 kilograms. Fat Angus, carrying something? And the last one. Eight, another standard work boot, number 44. There's an aberration in the pattern of the sole. The right sole is smoother, more worn. 
curious. A missing eighth Hardy Boy. Oh fuck, who is number eight? Okay. An aberration in the pattern of the soul. The right soul is smoother. Why would the right one be smoother? Because they might be a driver. Well, I don't know how intense... How intensely would you be pushing down on pedals to where your right foot would... I don't know. Maybe if you're... If you don't have shoes and you've just been doing it for like years with the same pair of shoes. I mean, certainly I personally don't replace my shoes very frequently at fucking all. Huh. But that's... That's a lot of wear and tear for pedals, right? It's got to be something else, maybe? That said, we don't know exactly how pedals are made up in this world, right? Maybe maybe in the world of Elysium, that is totally reality. All right, continue. Seven sets of tracks, right? The lieutenant has been tracking your eyes' movements. The Hardy Boys were here. Eight, actually. Look at that, and it zooms out to this. Oh, I love that so much. That's such a cool effect. That's so. Interesting. Then one of them seems to be missing. Anything else out of the ordinary? Point. Light step. Number 41 shoe. We were right with the numbering. I'm guessing that's this skinny hardy boy. The one with his front teeth missing. You mean the rat-faced one? Yes, probably not. You mean the rat-faced one? Yes, well... <laughs> the lieutenant thinks for a moment. He did look a bit like a rat, you're right. <laughs> do, do you think those prints belong to him? Yeah, probably. I could still be wrong, but I'm probably not. Point. A heavy one. 200 kilogram imprint. 200. He thinks for a moment. This could be the combined weight of two people, one carrying the other who's tied up. Let's say a heavily built worker carrying a similarly built armored man. Maybe it was the fat hardy boy, the one sitting in the middle. He might be right. 200 kilograms of living weight is unlikely. You're right, the fat guy from the booth was carrying the victim. Maybe it was a giant. It could have been one extremely obese person. I don't know. Maybe it was a giant? Maybe it wasn't? <laughs> Empathy, easy success. There is real palpable excitement in his voice at the prospect of it not being a giant. <laughs> I was thinking it was the giant of Coco Noor. But maybe it was. Just imagine it. A giant man, at least two and a half meters tall. You're right, it probably wasn't. <laughs> we have to go with one or two here. Both are good. <laughs> But maybe it was. Just imagine it. A giant man. At least two and a half meters tall. It could have been. But if it wasn't, he waits for you to finish the sentence. <laughs> You're right. The fat guy from the booth was carrying the victim. Oh, we leveled up from that. Hey, we got one of our points back. Probably, yes. This would also fit with the victim being dead from a previous gunshot wound. They had to carry him because he could no longer walk. Right, information that we have because we um, got super fucking lucky with um, digging through the body and finding the gunshot wound, right? All right, continue. He makes a note in his blue binder. Is there anything else that's noteworthy here? Point. An aberration. One soul is smoother than the other. Why, though? Also, why all of them? Why did they need so many of them out here? Even if they were all in on it, why did they all have to be out here at the tree? Right? 
Why was that necessary that all eight of these people had to be here? Why not just like one dude or even three if you needed help or something? Right? They could all be in on it and know. But why were they all here? Maybe they were just stupid? They were just um, full of themselves and they thought that they could get away with it? Right? Like, I don't think that they killed the guy, obviously, right? Because they're, they're so fucking obvious about it. I don't think they killed him. I think, um, I think someone else killed him, and they want to make it look like it wasn't whoever killed him, right? For whatever reason, whoever, um, the victim was, um, talking to, they remember that he was, like, in a look of feeling pleasure or something, and then got shot? I don't know. Point. An aberration. One soul is smoother than the other. Interesting. Let's name it the odd soul. It wouldn't be... I wouldn't be surprised if this was the missing Hardy boy. Wonder who he is. Do you have any ideas, Lieutenant? Someone operating a workbench. With a pedal. Like a... Joiner. At the harbor. He thinks for a second. Or maybe a drummer. Empathy, easy success. He regrets it the moment he says it. A drummer? That's stupid. So one of the people we are looking for is a drummer. <laughs> Don't say anything, just nod. <laughs> we need to make him pay for this. <laughs> Sorry, Lieutenant, I love you, but <laughs> we have to punish this <laughs> with stupidity. So one of the people we are looking for is a drummer. No, it's not. Forget I said it. We're not looking for a drummer. He raises his index finger. Perhaps it could be a driver. A driver would wear out their right soul before the left. The accelerator is on the right. I fucking knew it! So this confirms my theory that, um... Oh my god, was it the lady driver? Was it the lady driver? Is the lady driver one of the Hardy Boys? Oh, fuck. Maybe. Oh, shit me. Okay. Nod thoughtfully. I was actually thinking the exact same thing. I mean, I was. I really was in this case. Interesting. If only I had come up with that idea. I was actually thinking the exact same thing. He doesn't seem to hear you, looking south toward the traffic jam instead. The machines are silent. The engines are all turned off. We should keep our eyes open around the traffic jam. See whether anyone strikes out as a potential suspect. Seems prudent, no? Yes, prudent. I'm not sure. We don't want to attract too much attention. Yeah, prudent. Mm-hmm. The lieutenant writes down the information in his notebook, then reverts to the tracks in the mud. How old do you think these tracks are? A few weeks, maybe. Seven days would fit the time frame provided to us by the caller who reported the hanging. It is not impossible. How do you know? I pulled last week's forecast for coastal Ravishol, seven days below freezing. The day before, the day of the hanging, was the last warm day. Oh, so thankfully, it being like freezing cold out helped to keep the mud tracks like frozen in a state to where I could like do my weird shit. Vizcal, correct again. Sub-zero temperatures would preserve the tracks in a good state. The commotion here could have taken place a week ago. Man, do I have like decent viscalc in real life or am I just like really masturbating here myself? <laughs> All right. What do you think happened here? What do I think? A mob of people brought something heavy to the tree. One of them was carrying the victim. They shuffled around, especially under the tree. 5 XP. Then after hoisting him up, they stood in a semicircle facing his direction. At first glance, this appears to be a lynching. Oh, they were all out here to build a crime scene for us to find. 
that's why they were here to build like a fake alibi or whatever for all of them to implicate themselves right but why who are they protecting Everhart maybe I don't think so I feel like Everard Claire is, doesn't strike me as the kind of guy who would do his own dirty work. And even so, wouldn't do this kind of dirty work that could so easily fuck over everything that he worked so hard to build. Right? It's got to be a party that we... That we... Well, I, I, I'm hesitant to say it's a party that we haven't met yet, right? Maybe it is a party that we've met. Okay, continue. Vizcal. Indeed, they all stood in a row here and looked at the tree. But we know the victim had a bullet in his head. A more precise way to put it. It was made to look like a lynching. Like the coalition official said, surreal like a play. We've been purposefully misled. Let's go with that. I don't want to pay any heed to the fucking coalition. Fuck them, honestly. <laughs> We've been purposefully misled. By these tracks. Yes. Well, we've been through all of it. Holy shit. Cool shit. Cool shit. Kuno's, Kuno's fucking electricity. 20,000 volts. Kuno volts. Kuno, do you have anything new to say? After everything? Let's see. Oops, I think I clicked on the lieutenant. There we go. Fuck this Kuno kid! Kuno doesn't care. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm off. Kuno doesn't fucking care! See ya, Kuno. Can I investigate this, um, broken-ass shit right here? Okay. Perception sight. You see a set of tire tracks in the brown slush that covers the plaza mosaic. Vizcal, medium 11. Reconstruct the movement. Dude, I kind of love Vizcal. I kind of fucking love it. That said, it might be the only one that I kind of actively love up here. Right? I've kind of, Well, conceptualization is okay, but Vizcal is by far my favorite one to have points in up here, right? Okay. Otherwise, most of them, I'm quite happy with having low int, right? Okay. That's it. Maybe it's because I just don't know what I'm missing. Such as uh, the joy of potential future playthroughs. Anyway, Vizcal Medium 11. Reconstruct the movement. Nailed it, of course. Pfft, easy. <laughs> Blowing my fingertips. <laughs> All right. Vizcal Medium Success. The tire tracks were left here by an unknown event that took place some days ago. It's a message written in the language of burnt rubber. That said, this could be us, right? There's a strong likelihood that this is us who did this, right? This could be unrelated. Okay, continue. Some of that rubber stuck to the tiles right in front of the whirling and rags. This is point A. The driver started there, and then accelerated straight into the fence, left a hole big enough for the Franco-Nigerian cavalry, according to the cafeteria manager. Why that pang of guilt again? Oh, because this is definitely us, right? And isn't that where we got the Franco-Nigerian cavalry boots from our vehicle, right? Dude, that's fucking dope. It's connected shit, huh? Okay, what happened next? Vizcal, the driver proceeded to back out of the yard, barely stopping before hitting the adjacent building. Before heading south. Must have been in a hurry. Oh look, and there is reactivity here for us having gone to our motor carriage first. We can piece it together. That is so good! Oh, I love that! This is where I started. Off with my motor carriage before sinking it into the sea. No wonder the cafeteria manager seemed frustrated when he was giving us directions to the yard. Well, he gestures toward the gaping hole in the fence. You did provide us with a very 
convenient access point to the crime scene. I think I got it. That's a good point. How would we have gotten back here otherwise? If I hadn't done that. Right? We would have had to have gone through that blue door with which nobody knows. <gasps> the Hardy Boys must have the key. Right? For the blue mysterious blue door. It's the fucking Hardy Boys. One of them must have it. Oh, fuck. Dude, I'm piecing shit together. It's all falling into place. All right. Let's do this. Good. Let's re-equip our usual shit. Let's see what else. My glasses. I want my... Let's see. My biker cop sunnies. There we are. Looking fucking snazzy as shit. Great. Should we sell off some shit at the Freet real quick? I think so. I think we should. Now, we could also check in on uh, the Pale Driver, right? I feel like we don't need to now because we have, we have a strong enough lead now that lets us report back in on the Hardy Boys, right? We now have a lead that we can follow rather than needing to rely on Everard or Joyce. That said, we may get through with this lead and if we reach like a dead end for the time being and we do still have to pursue one of them, right? We'll see. Okay. Hey, actually, I don't need to speak with her, do I? I can just shove shit in here. Bottles! One real, 20 cents. You're a richer man now! Woo, I love it! Okay. Train to Money Town. All good. Okay. Hmm. Part of me, see, down there, part of me is tempted to, um, buy the, buy some books rather than buy usable items and stuff, because I, I just want to read what's in the fucking books, honestly. Okay. Let's go on over here and mess with the poor, poor fucking, um, pail driver, right? This is bad, but it's not as bad as it could have been, right? This is it, isn't it? Right here? Oh, look. Hey, what's this? Oh, fuck! There's speed in here! There's a lot of speed in here! Oh, shit! <laughs> wow, there was so much speed in the back of that right there! <laughs> Hang on! This is this is the lady driver's thing, right? I think? Or at least we're led to assume that. Let's get a refresh here. Yeah, okay. Leave. Alright, over here. Auto save. Let's investigate the pale driver. The woman still has her eyes fixed on the photograph in her hands. In the background, the radio plays. Snap your fingers in front of her face. If you want her attention, you may need to be more forceful. Snap your fingers twice. Where am I? Who are you? Like a magician recalling a subject from hypnosis, you've jolted her back to reality. Empathy, easy success. The smile on her face has disappeared, replaced by the wary aspect of a cornered beast. I was actually hoping you could tell me that. Are you all right, man? You were out. Me? I am the law around here. Hmm. I was actually hoping you could tell me that. Never mind. I remember now. I'm still stuck in the traffic jam. In the 50s. She adds with contempt. Wait, what's so bad about the 50s? The men have small jaws, and everything is made out of plastic. Why do you need plastic when you can make the world out of amber? Out of amber? Where else would you be then? When else would you be? Oh, this is because she's gone through the pale so many times. It's affecting her brain. Sometimes she does think that she's in a different time period, right? Because the, the pale exposure has fucked with her brain so much. When else would you be then? Back in Mefke, during the Mesca. time of the revolution, the side walls and coffees are filled with young people. I was on my way to see a new boy there, a picture starring Gabriel Buenguerro. Until you come along, that is. 
the look she gives you is accusatory. Who's Gabrielle Buenguero? This is Gabrielle Buenguero. She shows you the photograph in the lavish amber frame. Take a look. A strikingly handsome man looks straight at you, his head crowned with a wide brim hat. His hair is dark as an oil slick, and his jaw is the most perfectly chiseled thing you've ever seen. Suggestion, easy success. This man's got a hold over her. Even 50 years later, you can feel it. He was the biggest star of his day. The girls used it to faint in the aisles of the cinema whenever he came on the screen. And the schoolboys used it to memorize all his lines. She leans back, savoring the world she's conjured up. So I take it you were in Mesca when you were young? Someone was. She nods as, as though her meaning were perfectly clear. Right, because of the pail. They're probably not her memories or something like that, right? Isn't that how the pail works? It scrambles all sorts of shit together like that? Someone? Are these not your memories? They are someone's memories, boy. What difference does it make if it's me or not? She gets gruff suddenly. They are beautiful. That is all that matters, beautiful and true. And they will win. They are coming for this, you know. All of this. She looks around. Empathy, easy success. She seems to derive some bitter pleasure from this strange thought, as if the past will one day wipe the present away, like a tidal wave approaching. Dude, this is totally analogous for the pale, right? Maybe this is assuming, like, if we didn't know that this is the pale, we would get this um, bit of text here, and it would be a lot more like, what the fuck is this talking about? But now, since we know what the pale is, we totally know that, that like, that's exactly what's going on. This is, um, like, this is, like, the metaphor of at least one interpretation of the pale, right? It's literally the past come to haunt, terrorize, destroy the present, the future? Sorry to interrupt your dreaming, ma'am. I wasn't dreaming. I was there, low man. It was early spring, and the Miami and the Black Sun had just come out. The posters were 20 meters tall. Everything was golden. Her eyes narrow as she, and she appears to take your measure. The man behind the Black Sun. While you people were tearing each other apart over your petty little revolution. In Mezque, it was a golden age. Encyclopedia Medium Success. The Republic of Mesca is a massive confederation on the Isola of Mundi, the world's largest state by territory. It's a petrostate, a constitutional monarchy, and, as of recently, an outcast due to its tilt to the far right. Eee, uh-oh. Right, I have some other questions for you, police questions. Why not, Harife? It's not like I have anything better to do in this hellhole. She settles back against the railing of her motor lorry. Behind her, mountains of memorabilia, photos, and knickknacks line the dashboard. Inland Empire, easy success. There's something off about this woman. Tell her to show you the soles of her boots. <gasps> Maybe she was at the hanging somehow. I don't think so. I think it was the lady driver. Unless she is the lady driver, but I don't think so, right? Let's see. I think we can exhaust all of these, right? What are you hauling? Diamonds. Diamonds, really? Of course not, she says, grinning. But wouldn't it be marvelous if I was? Okay, but what are you really hauling? She shrugs. Whatever stupid things they put in the lorry, I imagine. So you don't know what you're hauling in your own lorry? I quit concerning myself with that a long time ago. She smiles a careless smile. Besides, I don't drive the lorry for the cargo, if you know what I mean. Electrochemistry medium success. She says that as if something narcotic is the real reason. Dude, she explicitly wanted to be a pail driver so she could go through the pail and get exposed to it. Wait, you get high off driving a lorry? 
Oh, it's so much more than high where I go, Sarif. It's low. I go to the bottom. She closes her eyes in reverie. Electrochemistry. Yeah, it's definitely some kick. Some terrible kick. The pale, probably. This pale sounds like it's the shit. Oh shit, reactivity. Huh. Okay. What if the cargo is contraband? I guess that makes sense, minding your own business. What if the cargo is contraband? Yeah, what if you get caught and then you can't do it anymore? Then it's contraband, lawman. What? Do you want to take an old woman like me in? Oh, wait. What? Do you want to take an old woman in? Be my guest. Lock me away like bad hand. Herman... Herman Gildo. Gildo. Gildo? I don't know. Bad her hand... Herman Gildo. Bad hand strangled 300 people. What can I say? Some people just really like strangling people. So says Encyclopedia. Easy success. I still don't really understand this whole Boyadero Gabriel Bueno Guero thing. Of course not. To truly understand the Boyadero, you need to uh, you need to listen to on the Western Plain. Encyclopedia Medium Success. A Boyadero, Boya for short, is a cow herder from upstream Magrit, the great steppes of northern Mesca. People like Manana at the gates have turned it into an ideology of sorts. Right. Okay, what's that? It's an old ballad about a young girl who falls in love with a daring boyadero. He promises to marry her as soon as he returns from the western plain. I'm guessing that doesn't happen. And they live happily ever after? I'm guessing that doesn't happen. Of course not. The Boyadero returns from the Western Plain, a changed man. One night, as he and his beloved are out walking the river Magritte, she pleads with him to give up his riding and settle down. I think I see where this is going. So he gives up his riding and settles down, right? <laughs> I think I see where this is going. Now let's, let's say he, he does it, right? No, the Boyadero strangles his beloved and throws her body into the Magritte. Then he rides off, because the Western Plain is calling to him. That's not where I thought that was going. Nod solemnly. A beautiful song. That's a terrible song. That is terrible. Jesus, he strangles her? You have to understand. A true boyadero needs a whole horizon to himself. He can't be tied down by man or woman. His beloved was selfish. She didn't know what it meant to love a boyadero. Is this like, um, this almost seems like Western Plain shit. This is like Wild West shit, right? A boyadero is like this uh, world's version of like a, a cowboy or a pistolero, some sort of gunslinger. Inland Empire medium success. What if to truly love a boyadero is to float lifeless downstream? Well, before I came, you seemed away. She's just a distracted old woman. We should maybe let her get back to her things. Logic, easy success. So he doesn't think she's the smuggler? You hear that, lawman? I don't think your partner likes you spending too much time with me. Wait, why is that, Lieutenant? Nothing. I just don't think she's connected to anything. Drama, easy success. It's because of the pale. He doesn't want your frail mind caught up in it. And this woman has spent a, has spent time in the pale. A lot of time. Should you drive a lorry if you get like that? Oh, don't worry about me. I'm one of the best camionneurs around. I drive routes no one else will. What routes? Lomonosov's land. Ud Udachnaya Zemle Zemlia. The Western Plain. She nods and closes her eyes again, letting her mind submerge. Shivers medium success. A terrible cold comes over her, rattling her teeth as she stares inward. The Trans Katla Magistral, U41A, as Estradas do, or 
as Estradas do Mirador, all the good ones, the deep trenches, where the bluebirds fly. She opens her eyes again and shudders. I'm something of an expert in blacking out. You should take better care of yourself. Cool. Right until you're dust, sister. Let's say that. Or Mao, she breathes out. I already am dust. Ooh. I think I know what's going on with you. And what is that? She sticks a filterless cigarette into a cigarette holder and reaches for the light. You're a pail driver. You transport goods through the pail. Great. The lieutenant concedes with a head shake. He asked the Pines rep about the pail, and now he's talking to everyone about it. Fine then. He sighs. Just try not to black out again. And don't contemplate. We don't have time for that. Oh, I'm contemplating, Kim. I'm drawing existential conclusions from this. Yeah, no. Just for detective work, that's all I needed it for. Now, everything is related to the pale. My condition, the case, everything. It's all intropanetic. Honestly, I want to say either one or three. Both are good. Hmm. Like, I don't think... Surely everything isn't related to the pale, but in some way the case probably is, or my condition. Something has to be related to the pale in some way, otherwise it would not exist as like a literary concept or whatever in this world, right? It's, it's Chekhov's world building, like we said before. Hmm. Let's go with this. Oh, I'm contemplating, Kim. I'm drawing existential conclusions from this. Exactly what I didn't want you to do. He sighs and turns to the woman. Ma'am, my partner wanted to know if you work in pale transport. No offense, but your partner... She lights the cigarette. A white and silver cloud of smoke disappears into her mouth. Seems like a bit of an idiot. She breathes out. The air tastes sweet. Perception smell. Medium success. Republica. A filterless cigarette from Mesca. Republica. Smell the air. That's not very healthy. I blacked out after a night of heavy drinking and lost all memory of the world. I blacked out from sheer heartbreak and lost all memory of the world. I'm not an idiot. I'm a detective of the RCM. Don't say I'm an idiot. Hmm. Here we can choose how we want to represent ourselves. Is it from sheer heartbreak? It feels like it might be, but we don't really know for sure, right? So let's just say from heavy drinking. Like Gabriel Buen, Buen Guero in Pojunt a Poira. She nods and smiles unkindly. You're the opposite of me then. I remember everything. Even things I never knew. Things you never knew. The smell of liquor on Gabrielle's lips after the shoot. In the motor park. The roses on the day of Franco Negro's coronation. On the grand stairs of Rail. The smoke from the fouling place when Dolores Day was shot. The look on her face like an orgasm. Whoa, that's very similar to the armored man, huh? Wasn't that how it was described? Huh. The wound in her chest. My hand in my father's hand. She closes her eyes, her eyelids trembling. Except I never had a father, and I never shot her innocence, Dolores Day. Over radiation? Isn't that dangerous? Over radiation? Heroic doses, Zarif. Heroic. Isn't that dangerous? Thought insertion? Dithering? The Grad Katla Magistral? She savors the lungful. It's more than dangerous. It's sad. But at first, I had to make a living. Now? When you've seen it all go away like that, rolling off like the sea, 
and then come back to this. She gestures at the square, the broken horse monument, the clanging of machines in the distance. What are we doing here? For thousands of years, Gabriel, 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 it doesn't have to be like this. We can just give up. We can just become vapor. What does it look like? The pale. What does it feel like? How do you pass through it? One last thing. You said we can just become vapor. What does it look like, the pale? Because isn't the pale gaseous, right? Or no, not entirely. Right? Maybe? I can't remember. What does it look like, the pale? Like looking into the ocean at night, in the dark. Ooh, I like that. Ooh. Oh, I, that is such a great analogy. If you have ever looked into the ocean at night in the dark, you can sometimes faintly see, like, maybe a glimmer. You can be like, is that something out there? I can't quite tell. You can't tell where the ocean begins and the horizon uh, ends and all of that. You can't tell one apart from the other, depending on how dark it is. Sometimes you can see, like, light flicker off of the waves or stars in the sky, depending on how dark it is. Ooh. It's very uncertain. It's very uncertain. All right. And... You cannot see it, but you know it's there, and it's big. Bigger than anything. Bigger than all the other things combined. What does it feel like? Nothing, until it starts. When you're deep enough, then, for me, it's like autumn. Dark gray and orange. The orange of street lights and the color of trees and the electric light. It smells like autumn, too. It smells terrible. Empathy, trivial success. Nostalgia, cooped up in the cabin, shaking. Terrible nostalgia. For yourself, for humans, it's too much to bear. She loves it. How do you pass through it? In the belly of an airship behind steel windows, so you don't look straight into it. It's not advised to look into it. Not on this lorry, then. No, the same one. A roller. They all are nowadays. Special wheels for connecting to the floor of the hold. She points to the machines, clumped up like toys. One last thing, you said you can just become vapor? 5 XP. Yes. I would rather have what I have than what you have. I would rather have what you have than what I have. I feel I already have what you have in some way. Yeah, I do. I forgot some shit, but I, I feel like I'm recalling weird shit that isn't part of me. I feel I already have what you have in some way. They say there is a point, one that I have not crossed in the pale super deep. If you stray too far off course on the U-41A, or in Lomonosov's land, where every step you take is one further from home, no matter the direction, it's a point you cannot come back from. Your mind becomes so radiant with the past, there's a flip. She flicks the ash from her cigarette. Instead of writing, it erases memory, nearing some kind of, she shakes her head, indescribable finale. Maybe you've been down the motorway south. She looks at her cigarette, it's almost out. She has swallowed it hungrily, then at you. The motorway south? It's a story. Us long haulsmen tell. Long haulsmen, Zarif, not pale drivers. Way beyond what the established pale that's lit by radio frequency, where it goes silent and dark, and the process begins. Erasure. Kilometer by kilometer, in any direction. 
The motorway south is a road you cannot come back from. What is at the end of the motorway south? No one knows what's at the end. She takes the cigarette out of the cigarette holder and extinguishes it. I've only glimpsed the beginning. Whoa. Thought gained motorway south. I've only felt it in the distance when I was a child. She goes silent. Her eyes close and her hands shake. A child rowing on the lake. Ma'am? Hosiana. A sigh escapes her lips, then silence, as she stares within herself. Empathy, trivial success. There's nothing more to do now. She's far away. Conceptualization, medium success. She is receding in the clutches of some indescribable scattered emotion. A child descending. You fried both your brains enough for today, detective. He inspects her, no response. Let's get some air. This one's far gone. He shakes his head silently as he turns to leave. Whoa, what? I don't think we were able to exhaust everything, right? We sent her down this. Wasn't there something else I could have asked her about? Holy shit. Wow, we should, I don't, I was about to say we should have talked to her so much sooner because she has so much cool shit to say. But that said, there was definitely reactivity for us having uh, learned what we've learned, right? Even with the lieutenant interjecting some, right? Oh, that's so cool. All right. I need this thought, right? Motorway South? That seems so fucking legit. Motorway South. Temporary research bonus. Oh, shit. Minus one Vizcal. Bizarre angles. Research time, 8 hours, 10 minutes. Problem. At the edge of the map, the landmass begins to disintegrate into pure trigonometry. The ocean melts, becoming a tangle of sines and cosines. The mountain range turns into a sharp, angled azimuth. Its green rain shadow dithers like music turning into a waveform, and then vanishes. This is the end. A half-remembered textbook from your childhood. The porch collapsing at the edge of the Isola. A transition from reality to pale. A single vector shoots out like a rocket. It's the motorway south splintering off from the known pale. To where? Where does it go? Ooh. Fuck, we need to get rid of something for this. All right. We got to get rid of the litany of contact mic. Sorry, contact mic. The pale is so fucking interesting to me. Forget that. All right. Motorway south. Internalize. Boom. <laughs> I'll take five of those, please. I don't care how much it tanks my Vizcal. All right. Cool. Holy shit. Well, when next we come back, maybe we do check in on the Hardy Boys now, right? Inside the Whirling? Maybe we do that, because we definitely have enough to come back to them and speak to them. I mean, we don't really have anything super wild, right? But we may be able to, I don't know, get more information out of them that could lead us elsewhere. I'm just not sure, but it's worth a shot. Until next time, please take care of each other.